He was just seconds away from a defining victory, a young star on the verge of glory. But the man on the other side of the ring was a seasoned legend who had never tasted defeat. This is the story of Meldrick Taylor versus Julio Cesar Chavez, a fight that became a classic moment in boxing history, encapsulating drama, controversy, and skill in just a few seconds. The 90s were a time of immense change globally. Nelson Mandela was freed, the Berlin Wall fell, and the internet was born. Amidst this backdrop in 1990, Meldrick Taylor and Julio Cesar Chavez clashed, mirroring the world's turmoil in their bout. The fight promised not only to be a technical masterpiece, but also a showdown that would shake the boxing world to its core. Meldrick Taylor wasn't just a rising star, he was something special. Born and raised in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the city of brotherly love, had produced a fighter whose skills were unbelievable. Before ever stepping into the professional ring, Taylor had already built a reputation as an amateur sensation, capturing the gold medal at the 1984 Olympic Games in Los Angeles. But the Olympics were just the beginning. When Taylor transitioned into professional boxing, his impact was immediate and devastating. Within a few years, he amassed an unblemished record. 24 wins, zero losses, and an impressive 14 of those wins coming by way of knockout. 24 victories and one draw, and these two warriors are undefeated in 91 bouts. Taylor had a blend of speed, technique, and precision that made him virtually untouchable, even against battle-hardened warriors like Buddy McGirt and Harold Brazier. Taylor's performances were truly dominant. But it wasn't just his physical gifts that set Taylor apart, it was his insatiable hunger for greatness. Trained by the legendary Lou Duva, Taylor was known for his relentless work ethic, often being the first to arrive and the last to leave the gym. Friends and family would often recount tales of Taylor running miles in the dead of night, long after his competitors had called it a day. It was this kind of dedication that helped him secure the WBA, IBF, and lineal light welterweight titles, making him one of the most decorated athletes in the division. He is the current IBF junior welterweight champion of the world, Meldrick Taylor. Statistics support Taylor's claim to rising stardom, with a punch output often far exceeding his opponents and a hit accuracy that frequently hovered above 40%, Taylor's numbers were impressive to say the least. With multiple world titles glistening around his waist and an unquenchable desire to etch his name among the greats, Meldrick Taylor seemed destined not just for glory. But what was next? The boxing world held its collective breath. Taylor prepared to step into the ring for what many believed would be yet another crowning achievement in a career already filled with them. Little did he or anyone else know just how defining this next bout would be. A fight that would challenge not just his skills, but his very place in boxing history. His next opponent was never going to be easy. Julio Cesar Chavez was already an established icon, a Mexican phenom with a jaw-dropping record of 68 wins, no losses, and 55 knockouts. Chavez was the WBC light welterweight champion. Gran campeón mexicano, Julio Cesar Chavez. Hailing from a modest background, he had fought his way up, defeating legends like Roger Mayweather and Sammy Fuentes. His body attack was ferocious and his will unbreakable. Chavez was not just fighting for himself, he was fighting for an entire nation. The pre-fight anticipation was electric. The media frenzied and fans couldn't wait. The two things to watch right off the bat are, will Chavez come out faster than he normally does? Will Taylor be able to avoid serious exchanges? Promotional events oozed drama with both fighters promising fireworks. Questions swirled. Could Taylor's speed overcome Chavez's power? Would Chavez's undefeated streak finally break? Going into the fight, Meldrick Taylor was widely considered the favorite, a golden boy poised to solidify his rising legacy against an opponent many thought he would outclass with his dazzling speed and technical prowess. Both fighters approached the center of the ring cautiously. Taylor, relying on his famed speed, looked to score quick combinations. Chavez, the master of inside fighting, was clearly aiming to wear Taylor down over the course of the bout. Taylor seemed to get the better of the exchanges, landing crisp jabs that momentarily kept Chavez at bay. That was a terrific round for Taylor. In round two, 
Taylor continued to build momentum, firing off combinations that dazzled the crowd. Chavez appeared unfazed, focused on landing his hooks to the body whenever he could close the distance. Taylor lands a vicious right hand. Despite the punishing body shots, Taylor closed the round with a flurry of punches that swayed the judges in his favor. The complexion of the fight started to subtly shift in round three. Chavez's body shots were beginning to take their toll. Taylor's punches still found their mark, but with slightly less frequency. Both fighters had moments of success, but the round could have gone either way. In round four, Chavez stepped up his aggression, managing to trap Taylor against the ropes multiple times. Here, the Mexican legend unleashed some of his most devastating body shots of the night. Taylor, however, fought his way out of the corners, showing heart and resilience. The promotion for the bout, Ray, called it thunder meets lightning. Lightning. There was a good straight left by Chavez that snapped Taylor's head back. In that characterization, Chavez would be thunder and Taylor lightning. But there are a lot of people who think that Julio is not a powerful puncher up here at 140 pounds. In the pivotal round five, Taylor seemed to find a second wind. His combinations were landing more cleanly than in the previous two rounds. Chavez's face began to show signs of wear, a testament to Taylor's offensive output. And within the last 30 seconds, Chavez has landed three solid left hooks inside. Taylor comes back with a bristling uppercut. And another flurry for Meldrick Taylor. Rounds six to eight were arguably Taylor's best rounds, as he outboxed and outmaneuvered Chavez, who seemed momentarily puzzled by the Philadelphian's speed and agility. It appeared that Taylor was running away with the fight, solidifying his position as the favorite. Taylor and Chavez showed you there his incredible ability to take a punch. We enter round nine and the tide began to turn. Chavez landed a thunderous hook that visibly shook Taylor, though Meldrick fought back valiantly. Chavez with a right hand that woke up the crowd for a second. It was clear that the accumulated damage was starting to affect him. Rounds 10 and 11 were brutal rounds for Taylor. Chavez, sensing his opponent's weakening state, increased his output, focusing particularly on body shots that seemed to sap Taylor's energy. The crowd sensed that a dramatic ending could be in store. Blood again from the mouth and the nostrils. Watch the legs. beginning to close. Chavez is coming on. With less than a minute remaining in the final round, Chavez landed a vicious right hand that dropped Taylor to the canvas. A dazed Taylor managed to rise out of the count of six, but was clearly on unsteady legs. In one of boxing's most controversial moments, Taylor was ahead on points, but visibly exhausted. With just two seconds left, referee Richard Steele stopped the fight after Taylor failed to respond, giving Chavez a stunning victory. This fight remains one of the most hotly debated in boxing history, not just for its high level of competition, but also for its controversial ending that still sparks debates among boxing aficionados to this day. Over the course of the fight, Taylor threw an impressive 1,070 punches, landing 441. Chavez was more economical, but devastatingly effective, throwing 656 punches, but landing a higher percentage at 350. The stats revealed a high output fight where both fighters had their moments, but the lasting damage inflicted by Chavez ultimately tipped the scales in his favor. The clock stopped at 2 minutes 58 of the 12th round, but for Meldrick Taylor, it felt like time had stopped altogether. The once invincible golden boy of American boxing was not just defeated, he was shattered. Before that fateful night, Taylor was the epitome of a rising star, a dazzling talent with an aura of invincibility. But the grueling 12 rounds against Julio Cesar Chavez seemed to take something intangible yet vital from him. His spirit, his fire, that inherent spark that separates champions from mere contenders. Post-fight medical assessments revealed the grim reality. Taylor had suffered a facial fracture and was urinating pure blood. Physically, he was a broken man, and psychologically, the loss tore into his confidence, haunting his future performances. Though he did continue to fight, even managing to pick up the WBA welterweight title in 1991, Taylor was clearly not the same boxer who had danced circles around Buddy McGirt and Harold Brazier. He seemed slower, his once crisp punches now lacking their earlier snap. In future bouts, particularly his losses against Terry Norris and Crisanto Espana, Taylor seemed to fade quickly, as if the ghost of that fight against Chavez was sapping his stamina round by round. Statistics revealed an uncomfortable truth. Before the Chavez fight, Taylor had an unblemished record of 24-0, with 14 knockouts. 
Post Chavez, he managed only a 14 to 8 to 1 record, a stark drop in performance that is difficult to attribute solely to the passage of time or quality of opposition. Meldrick Taylor's story is often told as a cautionary tale, a reminder of how one night can irrevocably change the trajectory of a promising career. The man who once had the boxing world at his feet found himself years later struggling to find his footing, both in the ring and in life. In a sport where the margin between glory and tragedy is paper thin, Meldrick Taylor's journey serves as a somber testament to how quickly fortunes can change. He is a tale of what could have been, a narrative that, like the final seconds of that 12th round, will forever be frozen in time.